Hey guys, Haley here from Penny Rowell Forest State Resort Park and on today's recreation station I'm going to be talking to you about butterflies, specifically the spice bush swallowtail. Did you know that butterflies go through different stages of life? I bet you did because you've probably heard about metamorphosis before. Well, butterflies start off as teeny tiny little bitty eggs about the size of the head of a pin that you write with. They're super duper small. The butterfly will lay its egg on a host plant, which is a plant that the caterpillar will eat throughout its larval stage. Now, when I say larval stage, you guys are gonna be like, what's that? But that's actually what we call the caterpillar stage. And then when they're caterpillars, they're just gonna spend all day eating that host plant. Did you know that butterflies are very, very picky eaters? A lot of butterflies will only eat on certain plants. They're very, very particular about what they'll eat. The spicebush swallowtail, for instance, that we're gonna be talking about today, will basically just eat the leaves of the spicebush, um, the sassafras tree, and then there are a few other plants, but those are the two main host plants that you're gonna find here on the park. In addition to that, they'll also eat uh, sweet bay, leaves, um, other things like that. They really like those fragrant plants. Um, the spice bush, if you rub on it, it kind of smells like a spicy berry. <laughs> and uh, sassafras, if you crush it, the leaf up, it kind of smells to me like citrusy, like a pine saw kind of flavor. And uh, they say that the underbark smells like root beer, but the butterflies aren't going to be eating that. They're just going to be eating the leaves. Well, actually it's the caterpillar, not the butterfly stage. So the caterpillar is just going to eat, 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 and it's going to go through five different instar stages typically. Now the spice bush swallowtail is kind of special because its instar stages all look a little bit different. When they start out, they're brown and whitish and maybe a little bit of black in there. And they're trying to look like bird poop. Gross, right? But a lot of things don't want to eat bird poop. So very smart on their behalf. Notice how I'm holding the leaf open in the photos. This is because the spice bush swallowtail caterpillars are nocturnal, meaning they're most active at nighttime. They weave silk from side to side on the leaves, so those leaves will curl up and create a hiding spot for the caterpillars to sleep during the daytime. Then when they're ready to go to that next instar stage, after they've ate, 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 and they get a little bit too fat for their skin, they shed that skin and then they'll go into this um, green instar stage. And I think they kind of look like a cute little dinosaur when they're in this stage. They have these really big black fake eye spots and kind of like a fat head. It's not like that all isn't exactly their actual head, but it's bigger on one side than it is the other. And that makes it look like what I think is a little dinosaur. But I think what they're actually going for is a snake. Because, you know, some snakes are venomous, not everything wants to eat a snake. So they're trying to hide and mimic and pretend that they're not actually a caterpillar and that they're this dangerous creature. Here you can see those fake eye spots well. Caterpillars actually have simple eyes that they cannot form images with. They can really only detect changes in light intensity. They have just one job as caterpillars, and that's to eat. They can consume 27,000 times their body weight during this stage and increase their body mass by 1,000 times or more. And then when they're ready to go into their chrysalis, they'll turn kind of like a yellowish orange color, and they still have that dinosaur snake look. You can see that it ranges from pale yellow to a darker orange, and I just wanted to give you guys a comparison of that and the green stage right here. And then after they're done with that instar stage, they'll go to their final one, they'll shed that skin, and then become a pupa or a chrysalis. This is the pupa stage. And the chrysalis um, is what a lot of people think of as a cocoon, but that's actually a myth. 
Um, moths will go into cocoons, but some moths will go into chrysalis as well. But all your butterflies are going to go into their chrysalis. And they shed their skin, and then the skin that is left underneath that hardens, and it becomes a protective kind of shell. Now, if it were a monarch, it would come out of that chrysalis and then it would fly down to Mexico. But these are spicebush swallowtails and they stay in Kentucky all year long. But you don't ever see any butterflies flying around during the winter, do you? That's because these guys overwinter in their chrysalis. I'm actually gonna get one of these out for you right now so I can show you. So, this is what a chrysalis will look like. So as you can see, it's kind of a hard shell. It's not gonna bother them or disturb them when I touch that. And they're gonna stay in this hard shell until it's springtime. Well, it's springtime now. And I have my first butterfly of the season. At first, I didn't know that they overwintered, and I got really nervous after they had been in their chrysalis for over a month and nobody was coming out because typically they're only in there for a couple of weeks. Whoops. Yeah, you're ready to fly away, aren't you? I'm going to grab this butterfly by all of its wings so I don't hurt it so it doesn't strain. So you guys can get an up-close look at what it looks like. And then I'm going to let it fly away. So it's going to go off pretty quickly. Notice these orange spots. It's probably going to fly immediately off. There it goes! When they're getting ready to pupate, they create a little hammock made out of silk for themselves. And over winter, the swallowtails will enter a phase called dyspause, which is basically the butterfly form of hibernation. They produce an internal antifreeze to prevent damage from the cold temperatures in winter. Then when they're getting ready to come out of their chrysalis in spring, it'll turn a clear color and they will come out and then they'll pump their wings up with hemolymph, which is their version of blood. And this is what the spice bush swallowtail looks like in its final form. Would you like a dwarf crested iris? Might be nice, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed learning all about the spice bush swallowtail today here on Recreation Station. My name's Haley Joseph here from Pinyral Forest State Resort Park. I'll see you guys next time.